welcome to my YouTube channel. I'm a UK based public health doctor and I make YouTube videos on all things public health and lifestyle. Now if that sounds like your kind of thing then feel free to subscribe so you don't miss any videos that I make. In today's video I'm going to be talking about how to get experience working in public health. Before I go into any more details I have two things I need to say. First of all you don't have to get extra experience working in public health. So as long as you've met the entry requirements, which I've detailed in my last video, and I'm also going to leave a link to the Faculty of Public Health entry requirements down below. So as long as you meet those entry requirements, you don't have to do any extra experience in public health. You don't really get any extra points for doing it. This is, this is mainly for people who really want to be sure about what the job entails before they make the application. The second thing is, the tips I'm going to be mentioning are things that I have tried and they worked for me to varying degrees, but this was during normal times. We are literally in the middle of the biggest public health emergency that there could be. So public health teams are quite busy, they might not be as responsive to emails and some of the things might not even be running anymore. So it's just worth keeping that in mind when you contact teams if you do and just to be understanding if they don't respond or if their response is the same, not at this time. So without further ado, let's get into it. Now the first way to get experience working in public health is by getting a placement as part of your F2 jobs. So if you're watching this as a medical student, when you apply for your foundation training, you get an opportunity to rank which jobs you want and each of the jobs have different combinations of placements of which one of those placements is public health so if you rank the jobs that have public health higher up hopefully you're more likely to get a, a public health job and this is really the best way I think of getting experience because in four months you is isn't long enough for you to really get integrated in the team you attend meetings you see how you know, you see what the day-to-day -day life is like for your registrar and also for a consultant and other team members. You also have enough time to actually get involved in your own projects and maybe do some presentations. And really is the best way to get the experience without going too much out of your way. That being said, those jobs are so few and far between. I actually tried to get a public health job and I didn't because there's just not very many out there. And that leads me really well onto my second point, or second way of getting experience, which is taster days. So again, this is mainly for the doctors. Um, foundation doctors have a certain number of days that you can use to experience other specialities called taster days. And you can use these taster days to get experience working in public health. So what I did, I actually split mine over two years. In my F1 year, I spent one day at a local authority well, I spent half a day at a local authority and the other half at a health protection unit. So I wanted to just get an idea of what public health was like and not invest too many of my taster days. After attending those um, two, after, after going for that one taster day, in my second year, I then contacted the public health team and I contacted a team that are used to having F2 doctors rotate through, through that department. And I asked to do a one week taster in public health. And that was really interesting because I got to shadow a consultant, I got to also shadow a public health officer and I got involved in a very, very small project updating the website and looking at childhood obesity figures. So I would recommend actually contacting the public health teams that the F2 doctors rotate through, mainly because they're used to having junior doctors in their team, they know roughly how much you know or don't know about public health and are quite accommodating. But that shouldn't really stop you from contacting other teams if, let's say, your local public health team are not accepting F2s at the moment or you just can't find out which team it is that the F2s rotate through. And this is also relevant for non-doctors. So if you know what your local public health team are, you can contact them and explain that you want to do a day shadowing or you want to have a taster day and they can let you know if that's possible. And I would advise contacting them ahead of time so they can choose a day when something interesting is happening. You don't want to come on a day when everyone is on annual leave and there's not much happening because that's a waste of an opportunity. 
when I was working in local authority, I had blocked, we had people coming mainly for, mainly for a day, but coming just to have an idea of what working in public health as a registrar is like. So I would recommend, again, like I said, contacting your local teams, but again, remembering that they are probably really busy, so they might not respond, or the answer might be not right now, because people are working remotely. That leads me well onto the third way of getting experience in public health, and that is through regional taste days. So the different deaneries that are in charge of public health training, um, a, a few of them have taste days where you can attend and um, usually an evening where you have presentations about what working in public health is like. You get to meet registrars, you get to ask questions, you get to find out more about the application process. And as part of that, um, so I attended the London, Kent, Surrey and Sussex taste today. And as part of that, there was an opportunity to sign up for a shadowing opportunity. So I signed up to do the, I signed up to be matched to a registrar who I could shadow. And often um, these deaneries require you to attend the taste today before you can qualify to apply for the shadowing opportunity. So by attending that, you get to, I guess, meet people, ask questions and get a chance to shadow. So I can't say much about what the regional shadowing involves because by the time I got matched to a registrar, I no longer needed a shadowing anymore because I'd already applied for the training program and I'd already got my place on the scheme. But that is another way of getting experience working in public health, granted only for a few days and sort of shadowing, but that's a, a way of getting an idea of what day-to-day -day life would be like. Finally, the last way that I know of to get experience working in public health is by getting a public health job. Now this is the one that is really, really difficult to get because there are just not very many. It's similar to trying to get a F2 or SHO locum job at a GP practice. GPs already have the GPs and the GP trainees and the nurses. There's not really a role for F2 doctors in GP, at least not enough of a role for there to be a demand for F2 locums in general practice. In the same way public health teams have the consultants and the analysts and the officers and there's not really a role for SHO doctors in public health. I say that though and I do know of one person who has gotten a job working part-time at a local public health team and the team she works with actually are a team that are used to having F2 doctors so they're the team that like I said F2 doctors rotate through that team in particular and I guess because of Covid they need more staff they were happy to have an F2 doctor work part-time so it's not impossible but it is rare. A similar thing I can suggest and um, that is probably more realistic to get is work is opportunity is working in a CCG. So whilst working in a CCG is not exactly the same as working in public health, you're not in a public health team, but they're quite comparable roles because you are working at a desk, you're not seeing patients, there's desk-based work, you're attending meetings, you're writing reports, you are making decisions about populations at that population level. So whilst there's not necessarily working in the public health team, it's as close as you can get so the experience of working there is, is comparable to working in the public health team and often CCGs work closely with public health teams so again that could be one way of getting experience that's similar to working in public health and I think will prepare you well for when you actually start the job. So those are my four main ways of getting experience working in public health. I hope that this video was helpful and answered any questions that you may have. If there's anything I haven't said or any ways of getting experience that I haven't mentioned that you know about, please feel free to share so other people can learn. Sorry for the abrupt end guys, my camera cut off. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in my next video.